because uh, obviously on both sides they have their own specific dogmatic and stereotyped sort of uh, vision of this very, very great event of 20th century. But the foreign writers are writing a lot about it. And this is good that now the debate is everywhere in the world about this event, which was not a small event. First of all, why Pakistan was created when Hindus and Muslims were living in a place for more than 1,000 years? Why it was created? Most of the writers talk about it. They describe push factors and pull factors. By push factors they mean, what were those factors which created, you can say, animosity or division or a sense of separateness between the two main communities, those were Hindus and Muslims. These are called as push factors. What were the push factors? Then there are pull factors. What were the things which were uniting, for example, one community Muslims and the other community Hindus? What were the reason of division? What were sociological factors? What were historical forces? What were international forces? What was happening at that time? In this uh, respect, the most important books I must refer to well, one, one was, though that was very much dramatized, and that was, even movies were made on that, Freedom at Midnight, the two writers who wrote it. But uh, that, I think, uh, as far as information was concerned, that was very good book. They had collected together all the information from every source. Even some information about my own village, which I didn't know, I received from that book, about different rights, and what had happened. Those were very accurate information. But as far as their, uh, what is called, uh, their analysis and interpretation is concerned, that some may differ with it, some may, may not. After that, the full flat books, for example, the latest, I must say, and most controversial from Indian viewpoint is that of Mr. Deswant Singh. Who, was, who served as a very, very, at very important posts in India uh, from 1996 to 2004. He was the defense minister, he was finance minister, he was foreign minister of India. And he, he wrote the biography of Mr. Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan, who is called as Kaide Adam in Pakistan. The name of the book is uh, India, I mean Jinnah, Indeed, very difficult name to remember. Uh, Jinnah. Maybe you can write it. Jinnah. Blackboard, no? Yes. Uh, Jinnah, India. No, what is Partition it? Independence. It I should write it. <laughs> Jinnah, India. <laughs> Partition Independence. Yeah. I should write it. Jinnah, India. Partition Independence. This is the name of it. And it was published in 2009, I think, by Rupa in India and Oxford University Press in India. This is a very good book, but it cost him a lot. The gentleman had to leave his uh, portfolio. He had to leave that party for which he had served for the whole life, because there was so much, uh, what is called, controversy about that book, that why he had written about Mr. Dilal, and in such good words he had attributed to him. Just a few days back, I was looking at an interview of Mr. Jaswant Singh uh, on YouTube. That is a three-part interview uh, in which uh, he said that while, uh, while answering a question, he said that uh, uh, he was a great man about Mr. Tina. He said he was a great man. And he said it three times. Interviewer was trying to confuse him, but he's again, again, and again said that he was a great And whatever Mr. Jaswan uh, Singh has said about Mr. Dina, that is not new. The things which he has uh, propounded in his book are not new. Because before him, in 1984, that was a very beautiful book written by Aisha Dina, who is now serving in the United States. In, uh, she is teaching. 
and she has written many books on subcontinent in South Asia. That book, which I am referring to, it was uh, The Soul Spokesman. That is a book about Mr. Jinnah, in which he, she had died. And that is a very, very unbiased and very clear saga, which she wrote and she tried to interpret the whole situation, why it was created. And she, she also talked about ocean, food factors and everything. And this one thing, I said aloud, these are one of them. Then, the biography of Mr. Dina, which was written by Stanley Walker, he also wrote two other biographies, one of Mr. Dina, Jawaharlal mm -hmm. Nehru, its name is Jawaharlal Nehru. The first one is Jina of Pakistan, Stanley Walker, which was published in 1984. The second one is about Mr. Bhutto, the Pakistani Prime Minister who was hanged. And that is Zulfi Bhutto of Pakistan. And the third is about Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru. Now, why Pakistan was created and what were the factors? Mr. Jaswant Singh says that Jina was not the only character. Jina was not the only character who was responsible for the division of India. He says there were many other characters. And he was not even the main character. He talks about uh, Jawaharlal Nehru also. And he, it seems that he puts more blame towards him and towards Congress party that they pushed Muslims towards their destination. But I mean, from Pakistani viewpoint, we, I think there are three main uh, personalities which were responsible for the creation of this country. The first was Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. He was a gentleman who died in 1898. And he was perhaps the first who saw that perhaps it will be very difficult for these two communities to live together in one state. And there were many reasons for that. The first reason was uh, there was dispute of Urdu and Hindi in 1867. There were riots and those things. And Mr. Sarsi felt that if these two communities cannot speak, even if they cannot be united on a language which is spoken by both and all the, most of the areas, if they cannot be, they cannot agree on that language. And if on the basis of language there are rights, then how they can live together? This was the first. If then, in 1885, when the Indian National Congress was uh, created, and ironically enough, created by a British, a British whose name was Hume. Mr. Hume created in 1885 Indian National Congress. And uh, somehow he felt, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan felt, that Congress was not representing, re representing all Indians. It was representing only one community, and that is Hindu community. He felt it in 1885. And that's why, that's why he created another organization that was called as Indian, National, uh, Indian Educational Conference in 1886, which was actually not a political party in the right sense of the word, but uh, it was created for, the, uh, for creating awareness among Muslims about the need of education. Because after, if you go into history, the British, when they came into India at that time, Muslims were the rulers. That was Mughal dynasty, which was the last king of Mughals, were there. So they had taken the government from the hands of Muslims. So this was very natural that they, they, they thought psychologically that their first enemy enemies are the Muslims. So they, 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 the main branch was borne by the Muslims. And uh, they, in 1833, <coughs> You know that before, that the national language of the court and of the country was Persian, up till 1833. This is a very interesting fact that even in the government of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the, who was a Punjabi and his government was in these areas, in, even his court language was Persian, right? But when the, the Lord Mukawli, and if, uh, I would Love if you read something about Lord Mukawi's education policy. 
that is very, very interesting how, uh, I should say, wise man he was. He said that unless you don't snatch away the language of a nation, of a culture, you can't occupy it, you can't subjugate it. The first thing which unites the people is the language. So first of all, deprive Indians from this language so that there should be division in them. He is saying it in 1833. And in 1833, according to the policy of the British, at that time it was a company which was ruling the whole of India. There was British India company. And in 1883, within a night, the court language was changed and replaced by English. Right? Now all the people who were highly educated a night before, they were totally illiterate a night after. Because they couldn't speak English. They didn't know. So they have to let read all of their posts and wherever they were working. So they became, at once everything was changed overnight. After that, Sasir was first in Muslims who felt that unless Muslims do not learn English, the language of the ruler, they will not be able to get any service. They will not be able to uh, earn bread or butter without learning this language. And in, as far as Hindus were concerned, they were well educated, they were more educated, they were better placed after that. But Muslims day by day they went, they became poorer and poorer and poorer. This was the reason that Mr. Sasir wanted to give education to the Muslims of subcontinent. And see, so he created that educational conference in 1886. In 1898 he died. The concept of Pakistan somehow, the idea of Pakistan is not new. I have written a book about Iqbal, who, if you know, he was the famous poet philosopher of Pakistan, and uh, who was the man be behind this whole process, who gave the intellectual food and inte intellectual thought to this whole idea of Pakistan. And uh, I think uh, I will present this book to you. And uh, this is not a very good or very, very philosophical book, but it is only just some information about why Pakistan was created. Uh, Iqbal and Vision of India. Because he is the second person about whom I will talk about after Sasir and Khan. Because the ideas which Sasir and Khan gave to Muslims, and he created an institution which is still there that is called as Aligarh Muslim University. Very, an institution of a very high caliber, uh, where the, all the modern uh, uh, branches of learning were introduced, and Muslims, because the Muslims used, they, they, they had no direct contact with the, these modern branches of sciences and all these things. So he was the person who tried to create and to, uh, a sense of awareness in Muslims for the importance of education.